Hey, 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 guys, and welcome to another Tipsy Thursdays. I am Juanita Coley, the CEO and founder of Solid Rock Consulting, affectionately known as the Contact Center Whisperer. And this week, we are talking about what is FCR and what is the impacts to your business. All right, so this week, we have the amazing guest, Adrian Silvin. Adrian, thank you so, so much for hopping on with me to, to educate the people on SCR. You know, we have a lot of three letter acronyms, TLAs in workforce management, and we're gonna hop into this topic here shortly. But before we do, tell the people a little bit more about yourself. And my first question that I always love to ask is, when did you first fall in love with workforce management? Yeah, well, thank you for having me. Good morning. A little bit about myself. I've been doing workforce management for probably 15 or so years now. And to date myself, uh, how I fell in love with it is here in Albuquerque, New Mexico. I was actually working, taking calls at T-Mobile. There's a couple call centers here and they used to have these Scala monitors that were CRT TVs. So really dating myself here, just bolted up on the wall <laughs> with some heavy duty bolts because it's it's a CRT TV that would show your stats of all the calls coming in and go through all the different queues. And that's what really got me to fall in love with workforce management. That's started off a 15 year career going between wow. T-Mobile for a long time to Stripe to AWS, Assembled, Headway, my own consumer consulting. And it's all from those CRT monitors bolted to a wall here in Albuquerque, New Mexico. It's kind of crazy how that all works out. I love that. I love that. So now, Adrian, tell me in your own words, right? This is all about education, education, education. What yeah. is FCR and why is it so impactful to a business's customer experience? Yeah, so FCR is great. So your first call or your first contact resolution, your first whatever that the, the customer is going to have an interaction resolution with you is super important. It probably just makes a lot of sense. You think about it. It's like, okay, we want to just make sure we get this one and done. There's a few different ways to look at it. You can look at it from your customer satisfaction. When's the last time that you called into something? A lot of us have horror stories. I like to pick on them a lot, but maybe Comcast or Xfinity and you have to call in multiple times or your doctor or something like that. And not being able to have that done in one and done or even know if it's going to get done is right. a huge dissatisfier. Maybe some of those companies have the ability to be the only game in town, but when you are another company, you're not that only game in town. You want your customer, whoever's calling in, to be able to call in, know they're gonna get their information done, ideally pretty quick, and it's gonna be a one and they're out and back to their business and you are just helping them instead of being another hurdle or something that they have to jump over. So super, super impactful there. And that's just on the customer side, right? We can look at the actual, the the agent, the people who are the, that bleeding edge talking with the customers. They're sitting there saying, I don't wanna to have to give somebody partial information or say, hey, you know what? Let me get back to you. Let me file a ticket or let me transfer that. That's, that's a big pain. That's something that they take pride in their work and then they can't actually get you a full resolution, that can be demoralizing. And when you look at those monitors and that they know that that call might come back in and there's that queue that's not gonna go away or it's just gonna continue to go out throughout the day. And that ties into the business side of it too. It's not feasible to continue to have maybe something that could be done in a single interaction turn into multiple interactions, your forecasting gets completely thrown off unless you're doing some sort of reopen or forecasting there. And it just costs money. I know when we were at T-Mobile, if we had to transfer something because it couldn't be handled in that one call, we had it down. This was many years ago now, dating myself. It was $15 per transfer. So we wow. had worked out. And T-Mobile was millions of calls a week. So you can imagine how that can add up really quickly. And those are just some of the, the real easy ones to look at and be like, wow, these are like low hanging fruit that we can fix and have a much better experience you know, top to bottom there. What would be some of your tips for managing FCR, especially when we think about how workforce management professionals can contribute to managing FCR and working with operations to help manage FCR? I think one of them here, it's definitely impacted by workforce management is making sure that those agents, whatever your people are called, are fully trained on what you are sending their way in mm. the volume coming in. And that everybody says, okay, great, that's training. But the workforce side is, when are they gonna get trained? Are you running a 30% shrinkage ship and really, really tight and everybody's got to be super, super high up on all their uh, adherence and everything? Or are you going to give some flexibility or bake that in and say, hey, you know what? We might have to take a little bit of a hit going through because we're launching something new. Let's bump the shrinkage up. Let's maybe grab some OT hours. Let's get creative with our flexibility here. Get them trained up work with training to make sure that that's in their new hire training so we don't have to keep paying that down the road. We're not kicking the can. And that's just making sure that they have that information. That's a really great start because you can have the best agents in the world, the best software, the best tools to try to walk them through whatever your AI might want to do. But mm -hmm. if they're not trained on it and they go and somebody asks them that question and they're like, I, I don't know, deer in the headlights, 
you know, chat GPT is only going to get you so far if you have no idea on the support side too. So that's a huge one there. I think that training and then one that I like to do, I've seen success with, and some people can disagree with me on this and no business is the same is I do like to differentiate the skills and the type of work that people are doing instead of going for the kind of overall person. Mm -hmm. Um, I think for different business models, that makes a lot of sense, but otherwise you have that very strict, maybe you have four or five different sorts of cues, ways that it's coming in. You can really specialize on those. I think it's great to promote kind of that stretch goal of you can specialize, but also maybe dabble in some of those other ones here to really try to keep it as that first contact resolution. But for the most part, you're going to be that expert on your tier one, your tier two or something like that. Something comes in, you know, you're going to get it in. You're going to get it out. It's going to be in that like 15 minutes or so, whatever your time is, and it's done. And I love that you went there because there is argument out or, you know, not argument, but, you know, there is conversation to be had around skill consolidation, right? Making sure that we do the right cue mapping and all of those different things, because you'll have some organizations that just do way too much, right? Like Mm -hmm. it's, oh, we got 50, 11 million which I don't know what number that is. My 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 grandmother still say that number, and I'm like, what number exactly is that? Fifth eleven, you know, <laughs> you know. Yep. So you know, you have all of these skills where now it's hard to forecast because too much segmentation. But there is a need for you to segment to a degree so that again mm-hmm. I can again be able to impact first call resolution. I don't need, you know, generalists. I need people who are specializing in this particular skill or this particular set of service because it's nothing worse from a customer perspective. Well, it's a lot of things worse, but it is a frustration (laughs) point, right? When we think about, hey, I called in, I pressed three for billing. I thought I was getting billing and you're like, oh yeah, I can't take your payment. Well, yeah. Throw the whole IVR away, right? You know, (laughs) let me transfer you to someone in billing. Well, that's what I thought I pushed. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Or maybe maybe you're talking to the IVR too, and it's like, can't understand you, and it sends you to somewhere else. I think that there is a healthy balance is what I'm saying and what I'm wanting to articulate. Mm -hmm. I think there is a healthy balance between segmenting and creating enough skills to where you can be able to say, okay, this is the group, but then these are the individual skills that belong to that group. And then making sure you have a training plan that can walk people, Mm -hmm. walk in employees down like okay they onboarded they got tier one and they got tier two now the next skill in their trajectory for this skill grouping is tier three or tier four or whatever the case may be and making sure that those tier three and tier four skills are not added to them while they are not you know, masters in that skill or not proficient in that skill rather, you know? And so yep. I love, I love that you gave that tip on how you can help, how workforce management people and uh, professionals rather can help manage and contribute to FCR. Yeah. And I love what you're talking about the skills that really making them small. So just to give an example, there was a company at Assemble that we were working with and just going through the pre-sale motions and talking with them, they had one skill roughly for every three people. So if they had 1500 agents, they had 500 mm. skills. That's deep. And so, yeah, and you go through and they think, oh, no, it works. And then I'm like, hey, let's let's walk through a, an early calculation on a skill that gets 27 calls a week, but you're open 24 seven. That's what 168 hours of staffing at minimum, because you just need to be open all the time. And it's just like start to look at that with the actual numbers. And then it makes a bit more sense versus we'll just keep slicing and dicing. And then you got to come back. you got to reel it back in. Yeah, yeah. And this is why I love to have the marriage between operations and workforce mm-hmm. management, because it's so easy for us to say, oh, just throw another skill create, you know, reach out to telephony and create another skill. No, 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 no. Before we do that, let's actually do some cost analysis to figure out what is the cost to just because we can, that doesn't mean we should. I think we really, as workforce management professionals have to do a better job at articulating, right? Mm -hmm. Not just saying no, that's not what gets it done. It's being able to advocate for what the point is, right? Like, hey, this is why, this is the why behind the reason I'm saying it might be better for us to have four skills rather than 47 skills. And this is yeah. why, this is the cost that's associated with that. But because a lot of times what happened as introverts and, and people who got their head down in the numbers, this is me. So I have to be mm-hmm. the first to raise my hand, right? And I'm always aware of it is that it's easy to have your head down in the numbers and withdraw and say, no, this is the way it needs to be done because it's just, it's the way it is. But it really yep. takes a leader and a trusted business advisor 
right? That's what I believe workforce professionals are. I believe we're trusted advisors. We should be trusted advisors to the business to say, this is why. Yes, right? we should be much more than the, than the ones who say no. And, and I really like your point about, oh, just add another skill. There's so many times, and this is, I'd say, what's gotten me pretty far in workforce management. When you look at this, it's really easy to get lost in the numbers, to get lost in your spreadsheets. Those numbers are people asking for help and people that you are working with. They are not numbers, they are people. And anything that I put in a spreadsheet that's just a number, it doesn't matter until I actually make it successful and that people can actually do what I'm asking them to do. Otherwise, it's just a pretty spreadsheet. We all love those. That is so good. Chef's kiss. We can end (laughs) on that note right there. Like, that is so good. It's just numbers on a sheet of paper. But when we think about it, when we take that off a piece of paper, those are people. When we're Mm -hmm. thinking about customers, right, who we're impacting, and when we're thinking about employees, we're thinking Mm -hmm. about people. And we have to begin to associate, create that connection. Adrian, chef's kiss. I absolutely (laughs) love your thoughts on FCR. Thank you so, so much for being our expert on this uh, week's Tipsy Thursdays. Listen, tell the people where they can find you. Yeah, great. You can, of course, find me on my LinkedIn, linkedin linkedin.com slash aselden. Um, and my website too, seldensolutions.com. Come visit, come check it out. We'll chat. Awesome, awesome. We'll hang out in the green room. I'm going to wrap the episode up and I'll be right over with you. Sounds great. Oh my gosh. Again, chef's kiss. That was amazing. I don't have anything else to add. Listen, workforce management professionals, you do impact FCR operations. We impact FCR. Okay. Now you know what FCR is. Thank you so much for tuning in until next time. Go be great and make impact. See you guys soon. Bye.